And so we've got Anthony Ryder from South Lyon, Michigan, recently selected as the Lions 2020 Fan of the Year. He has a passion about sports broadcasting. With the 112th selection in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Detroit Lions select Amon Ross St. Brown, wide receiver, USC. One cry, baby! What is going on everybody welcome back to another detroit lions video now the detroit lions are in full swing of the nfl preseason completing rookie mini camp a few days ago and having a lot of news and rumors start right the rookies are about to join the veterans and odds are coming out and numbers are coming out and all this different news and rumors surrounding the lions is starting to surface so today we're going to talk about all of it things ranging from coach of the year odds to schedules to declined rookie contracts by one of the Lions rookies as well as a little bit more. So with that being said, we have a lot to get into today. So without any further ado, let's get into taking a look at this week's Detroit Lions news and rumors. Now we're going to start off with the schedule release. The Lions and the NFL released their 2022 schedule on May the 12th and a lot of Lions fans had mixed opinions. Although I think the schedule is very, very well put together. I think the Lions have a really good schedule this season. A lot of people were very, very upset about one particular thing. Now the Lions open up their 2022 season at home versus the Philadelphia Eagles. Their very first divisional game is in week three versus the Minnesota Vikings. Vikings, which is all which is an away game at Minnesota the Lions play the Buffalo Bills on Thanksgiving and close out in Lambeau in week 18 for what Lions fans hopes is not a meaningless game for the fourth year in a row but that is not what Lions fans are upset about. They're not upset about playing in Lambeau in January. They're not upset about playing the Bills on Thanksgiving. They're not even upset about opening up versus a former playoff team that likely has the advantage over the Lions going into week one. No, the Lions are in fact are upset about the fact that they do not have a single primetime matchup in the 2022 NFL season with the obvious exception of their annual Thanksgiving game. Now, a lot of fans are very upset about this, but for for me, I think it's a really, really good thing, and so does head coach Dan Campbell. He talked about how, you know, it's a good thing, you just get to your opponent, you move on, right? You get extra time to prepare. A you get extra time to prepare and you just right you're not set at a disadvantage and i think that's the one thing a lot of lions fans are missing because yes it's great to play on prime time yes you obviously you want your team to be in the spotlight you want your team to be the only one on and you want to be able to watch them as the only football game on tv but when you think about it prime time games really only put your team at a statistical disadvantage if you are the actual team playing the games right? If you play on Thursday night football, it gives you a shortened week to prepare. If you play on Monday night football, it gives you a shorter week to prepare and less rest for your football team, resulting in obviously less practice time and resulting in worse play by your particular football team. So the fact that the Lions don't even play a primetime game with the exception of Thanksgiving, I think is absolutely huge for the Detroit Lions. That means they will not be put at a rest disadvantage. That means they will not be put at a disadvantage advantage from days trained and from trainings and from practices whereas a lot of teams that have big primetime games right the Bears the Bills the Patriots the Packers the Vikings right these division rivals these big time games they do have primetime games they do have primetime matchup and in turn have shorter weeks and with that being the case the Lions don't have that disadvantage and I think that will be an advantage for them not playing in the primetime and as Dan Campbell said they could always play their way into the actual like flexed in to a primetime matchup if the NFL feels like they need to change it but as of right now they do not have one and a lot of Lions fans are upset however 
One thing Lions fans are not upset about is the newest odds and the new betting odds for Coach of the Year, as Dan Campbell in recent weeks has actually sprung ahead to lead the odds in becoming the 2022 NFL Coach of the Year. Now, I think Dan Campbell has a long way to go before he is the Coach of the Year. I think there's a long way for the Lions to go before Dan Campbell or any of them are seriously considered for any number of awards. However, I do see this happening. I do think that there is a way, I do think there is a possibility that next Next year, you could see Dan Campbell lifting that award. I think you could see Dan Campbell at the award show, and I think you could see Dan Campbell being named the AP Offense. I think you could see Dan Campbell being the AP 2020 Coach of the Year in the NFL. And especially if the Lions hit the ceiling that a lot of people have for them, that ceiling of being a wild card team, that ceiling of being a 9-10 to 10 win team and sneaking into the playoffs, I think that would be just about enough to push Dan Campbell over the edge, right? You have that story of him taking the Lions from a number two overall pick to the playoffs in one year. You have obviously the hard knocks this season where everybody's going to get a good look at Dan Campbell. I think the storylines are there. I think the path is there for Dan Campbell to reach coach of the year. However, I think it's unlikely. I think he's going to be overshadowed by a lot of other guys, especially if the Detroit Lions aren't in serious playoff contention by the end of the season. I think he's going to get kind of pushed into the sideline. I think he's going to be pushed a little bit back into the shadows, but it is interesting to see that Vegas and some NFL analysts are starting to give Dan Campbell a little bit of respect, whereas this year or this time a year ago, they were giving him anything but now moving on to the rookie contract negotiations, as I mentioned earlier in the video, one of the Lions rookie contracts has since been declined and actually vetoed by the NFL themselves. Now the player himself did not, Kirby Joseph, did not decline this contract. He actually signed the contract and agreed it to terms. However, the NFL had to step in and say that wasn't proper value for the 97th overall pick. I don't remember the exact numbers. I don't know exactly what was changed from the original to the current that was accepted by the NFL, but the NFL essentially had to step in and say, okay, this 97th overall pick would not be making enough money for the 97th overall pick, right? He essentially signed too good of a deal for the Detroit Lions that the NFL had to step in and say, no, 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 you can't sign that. He has to make at least this much money as a third round pick or as the 97th overall pick or whatever the case may be. So I thought that was something very interesting. However, the Lions did officially sign Kirby Joseph. They reworked out negotiation terms and they did sign the deal. And the Lions rookie class in its entirety has every single player signed with the exception of second round selection Josh, pa Josh Pascal. Josh Pascal is the only rookie to not currently be signed under contract with the Detroit Lions, but Hutchinson got his, Kirby Joseph got his, all the third, all the day three guys got their contracts, as did Jamison Williams. The only player we are waiting on is number 93, the player from Kentucky in Josh Pascal. With all that being said, that is really the big news and rumors for this week, right? A couple of interesting things. Aiden Hutchinson did sign a really, I mean, pretty good, I believe he's making 9.8 a year and everybody else is going to be making slightly less than that. The Detroit Lions have made a couple signings. They've made a couple releases. I know they signed one of of the tryout players from rookie minicamp. It was the former linebacker from Georgia, who is actually a fifth-year veteran now, but did come from Georgia, and I believe played with the Rams and the Falcons as well. They released Jesse Lemonier, the player that had two and a half sacks a season ago for the Detroit Lions, right? Had a big sack, had a couple of big plays actually versus the Green Bay Packers in week 18. The Lions have also made a couple of other minor releases, including guys like Javante including guys like Javante McKinley and Julian Elliott, players that, again, were undrafted for agents either last year or a few years ago. Jalen Elliott obviously saw a little bit of starting time versus the Pittsburgh Steelers and saw a little bit of playing time due to injuries a season ago. But with the recent additions and the recent bolstering of the safety position being pretty deep with Tracy Walker, Deshaun Elliott, Kirby Joseph, Will Harris, and CJ Moore, as well as guys like Bobby Price, Brady Breeze, and a couple of other guys standing in that spot, Jalen Elliott just simply did not fit on the roster anymore. So he was officially cut as was Javon McKinley, the wide receiver from Notre Dame that was an undrafted free agent from a season ago. But with all that being said, that is all the news and rumors we have for today. That's all the news and rumors we have for this week. Again, if there's any more, 
If there's anything else to come out over the next couple of days, of course, we will be back to talk about it. But as of right now, that is what's happening in the Lions organization right now. Rookies are signing contracts. Players are getting in the building. The veterans are about to meet the rookies. The rookie minicamp is officially over and football is about to return to Allen. Park. With all that being said, that is enough for you guys today. Let me know down in the comments below what you think about any of this news and rumors. What do you think about Coach of the Year odds? What do you think about the Lions schedule and their lack of prime time games? I'd be very curious what you guys think. But with all of that being said, that is enough for you guys today. Thank you all so very much for watching. And until next time, and as always, go Lions.